Assalamualaikum to everyone. Waalaikum Assalam, sir. Is my, is my voice clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem at all. Okay. So today we are going to talk about a very important literary device. And uh, this device is something that, again, uh, let me tell you, not only we, do we use it in literature, but it, it's very commonly used in uh, everyday language as well. So it is called anaphora. Have you ever heard about this literary device, anaphora? Have you ever heard about this uh, this uh, word, anaphora? No, sir. Never. Anaphora in literature. <clears throat> So, so it sounds more like a disease. It's a very important literary device. And uh, when I tell you about this one, so you will really admit that this is a very important thing that we should uh, know about it. So let's start. Let me wait for one minute more. Then I start with the screen of these seven participants. So let's wait for one minute more. I have uploaded all the videos and uh, you can subscri subscribe that video channel. You will directly get the videos and you can also download it from YouTube channel of English department. Someone asked me to send the link. So actually when all the things are easily available, so I don't think that I should send you the link. So can you watch without downloading it or do you have to download it? can watch the video without download without downloading if you download so it will take more, uh, much space approximately one video i think it takes more than 50 M mbs and uh, it will cover the space as well as slow down your your the speed of your mobile mobile phone so let's start anaphora what is anaphora so it is a rhetorical device that features repetition of a word or phrase. It includes repetition of a word or phrase at the beginning of successive sentences, phrases, or clauses. Anaphora works as a literary device to allow writers to convey, emphasize, and reinforce meaning. This is if a writer wants to, not only a writer, but also a speaker wants to convey or emphasize and reinforce <clears throat> meaning whatever he wants to say, he can do this thing. He can use an aphora. Now this word repetition at the beginning of each phrase in a group of sentences or clauses is a st stylized technique that can be very effective in speeches, lyrics, poetry, and prose. In prose, in poetry, you can find very commonly, even you can find many examples in prose, and I will give you some examples right now from some novels as well and from <clears throat> speeches as well. So it is what it is a rhetorical device that features repetition of a word or phrase at the beginning of sentences or successive sentences, one after the other, one after the other. For example, you can see here, Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. It's a great example of anaphora in speech. Martin Luther's, the Martin Luther King's address at the March of on Washington in 1963. Notice how the repeated, how he repeatedly points out his dream. The Martin Luther King speech or Martin Luther Ponta, you can get it from that easily. He addressed 
he addressed the march on Washington in 1963, in which he emphasized certain things. Now, what that speech is in which he has used in a forum, you can see here. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Then he says again, let me, I have a dream that one day on the bread hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at a table of brotherhood. Then again, I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression will be transformed into an houses of freedom and justice. Then again, I have a dream that my four little children will only will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. With so much I have no good. What I want to tell you. Yes. With this example, have you understood what I wanted to tell you? This repetition is uh, phrase ki, I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream. This is something that is focusing what he was having a vision. Martin Luther, I think he was black and that time black people were ill-treated or something like this. And that's why you can see over here, he's addressing and he's, uh, you know, uh, showing, his, you know, hopeful attitude that one day things will be good, things would be good, and his children would see that thing. And he is talking about his dream. Dream means uski jam urdu mein karein arzu hai, uska ek khab hai. So he is repeating here. I have a dream. I have a dream. By repeating this thing, he is doing what? He is emphasizing his dream. He is emphasizing his vision. So this is what we call anaphora. Is that clear? Yes. yes, so it means uh, when we repeat something, it emphasizes the uh, importance of that phrase or yeah. that sentence. Yeah, that sentence, that phrase, or the sentence, sorry, or that form. Why do we repeat? Yes. Because we want people to focus whatever we want to say. In, even, even in our own language, we sometimes repeat certain things. Why do we repeat? Because we want people to focus, you know, what we want to say, or we want to reinforce what we want to say. Now, another example of this one. Winston Churchill's We Shall Fight speech. Winston Churchill was famed for his public speaking and made good use of many rhetorical devices. He personality personality, public speaking was renowned or famous. So he made good use of many rhetorical devices, both rhetorical devices. This anaphora shamil the. Anaphora is one of them. Consider this speech to the House of Commons in June 1940. June 1940 ko speech House of Commons se karta hai. Let me show you the lines here. Kya kehta wo? We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the earth. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the land, landing ground. ground. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. So you have people who just focus, emphasize, reinforce, fight. We shall fight. Yeah. Or ye kab ki baat hai? It is for 1940. 1940 means Second World War was about to begin. Or I think Second World War began. Kab Second World War with 1939 start with you. I think the 39 or so start with that. So it was a time when there was definitely a tension uh, in the world, not only between two countries, but in the world. And it was uh, the terrible war of uh, Second World War. 
so what he is doing motivation he is motivating i think his people or is motivating his so uh, you know forces is motivating his forces and you know by using you know and for a year we shall fight we shall fight we shall fight kahi bhi ho hum ladenge kha wo faras ho kha wo samandar ho darya ho ya pahadi ho ya kahi koi bhi jagah hogi hum ladenge aur ladenge dushman ke sath so he is doing what motivating his people or he is motivating his for by, by this particular speech we feel, we can understand that he was motivating his forces for armed forces and by using anaphora he has created this effect is that clear yes sir now if we see further so we can see over here the tale of two cities by charles do you know about charles dickens who is charles dickens चार्ल्स डिकन का नाम नहीं सुना आप लोगों ने भाई क्या हो गया आठवें सेमेस्टर के स्टूडेंट्स हैं आप लोग या फोर्थ के चार्ल्स डिकन का नाम नहीं सुना सर नाम सुना है वो इसकी नोवेल पढ़ी नहीं क्या ही इज अ वेरी फेमस विक्टोरियन नोवेलिस्ट सर सुना है प्रोबेबली सर सर सुना है हमने नोवेल भी पढ़ी है कौन सी व्हिच नोवेल ये सर ये कोई नाम तो होगा ये भी एक नॉवेल है द टेल ऑफ टू सिटीज सर सर ग्रेट एक्सपेक्टेशंस ओके ग्रेट एक्सपेक्टेशंस व्हाट अबाउट क्या नाम है उसका डेविड कॉपरफील्ड नो ओके सो कैन एनीवन टेल मी अबाउट ग्रेट एक्सपेक्टेशन व्हाट डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम दैट नॉवेल चार्ल्स डिकन किस किस्म का ये नॉवेलिस्ट था वट काइंड ऑफ नॉवेलिस्ट वॉज ये चार्ल्स डिकन ओके द टेल ऑफ टू सिटीज पोएट्री इज फेमस डेफिनेटली फॉर एट अपर एवरी वन यू नो पीपल नोज बट इट इज नॉट द ओनली प्लेस यू कैन फाइंड इट Charles Dickens makes use of anaphora in the opening of the tales of two cities. Charles Dickens ne kya kiya tha ke anaphora ka istemal kiya novel ke shuru mein. How did he use it? Let's see. Now this is how he has used It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. अब इसमें ना सिर्फ एन एफ फोर्टेस समाल हो रहा है बल्कि एक और चीज का भी समाल हो रहा है जो हमने लास्ट टाइम पढ़ी है क्या पढ़ी थी लास्ट टाइम हम लोगों ने क्या नहीं टेल क्या नहीं हम टेल भी about this Yes, Arya. All of you are silent. Yes, come on. Say something. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Paradoxical statement, nee, isme. Best bhi keh raha hai, worst bhi keh raha hai. Age of wisdom bhi keh raha hai, age of foolishness bhi keh raha hai. Type of belief bhi keh raha hai, type of incredulity bhi keh raha hai. Season of light bhi keh raha hai, season of darkness bhi keh raha hai. Spring of hope भी कह रहे हैं और winter of despair भी कह रहे हैं। Sir ये parallelism भी तो होगा ना? Paradoxical statement, paradox, paradox जो मैंने आप लोगों को last time पढ़ाया था। Paradox पे क्या होता है एक yes. positive एक तरफ negative बात होनी होती है। So he Charles Dickens he are doing what he is telling about the age that this is something that you will find, you will find best and you will find worst, you will find wisdom, you will find also foolishness, you will find epoch of belief and you will find epoch of incredulity, you will find light and you will find also darkness. So both things are there. So he is emphasizing, he is focusing our attention or readers' attention towards these both aspects. So this is how he, by using it pronoun here, he or auxiliary verb was it was he has reinforced or he has you know attracted our attention to this line. This is how he has created the effect.
Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay, if we see further, so we can see over here. Now let me share, share things from the handout. So when it comes to speech and writing, so we have talked about few examples of speeches. Charles Dickens, conversation, you can see very uh, conversational anaphora examples. Anaphora is used in a conversational way to express to express emotion and as a means of emphasizing or affirming a point of idea. Here are some examples of conversational anaphora. Misal ke tor aapke paas hai. Go. Conversation mein samal ho raha hai. Go. Big or go home. Be, ho be bold. Be brief. Be gone. Be bold. Be brief. Be gone. Get busy living or get busy dying. Aap kisi ko misal ko gussa bhi kar raha hai ya kisi ko kuji chiz emphasize karke bata raha hai. Get busy living or get busy dying. Give me liberty or give me death. Give me liberty or give me death. This is the example of anaphora. Your death if you do not give me liberty. Give me liberty or give me death. This is the example of anaphora. You are damned if you do not. If you do, and you are damned if you don't. Don't assume that I am bad. Stay safe, stay well, stay happy. Here, stay is a word that is used as an anaphora. So, you see, how many examples are there? Stay safe, stay well, stay happy. Now, one student is saying that he is unable to link. So, actually, when I receive your request, then I will definitely allow you. When your request, the request doesn't come to me, at least there is a fault with you. So many places, so little time. So many places, so little time. I wish I may, I wish I might. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. It's a example. Ask. You say a missile will be a say. Ask here is a is an anaphora. Ask not what you what ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Give much, give often, give freely. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. ये गोत मकोला टाइप का भी है कि अगर आपने मुझे एक मर्तबा बेवकूफ बनाया तो आपको शर्म आनी चाहिए अगर दूसरी मर्तबा बना दिया तो फिर मुझे शर्म के मारे डूब पड़ना चाहिए यानी कि मुझे फिर आपने ऊपर बारे में सोचना चाहिए कि मैं दूसरी मर्तबा फूल कैसे बना so fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So here fool is an anaphora. Run far, run fast, run anaphora. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey word in a forum. Open heart, open mind. Open in a forum. Great haste makes great waste. It is a kind of proverb. Here you'll find what in a forum? Great. So can you give me any such sentences right now? Quickly. By making yourself. Yes, hurry up, hurry up. Can you? It's very common. Just try your best. If you have any example, you can give, you can share your example with me right now, with everyone.
Voice is not coming properly, my dear. Your voice is breaking. Just कोई एक आध example अगर दे तो हम आगे बढ़ते हैं. I want you uh, to give a few examples so that we can proceed to the next one. मिसाल के तौर पे कोई कहता है वर्क हार्ड फॉर योर फ्यूचर वर्क हार्ड फॉर योर गुड लक वर्क हार्ड फॉर योर होम वो यहाँ पे फोकस कर रहा है वो यहाँ पर आपको एक्सरसाइज कर रहा है कि मेहनत करो भाई हर चीज में मेहनत ही करनी है आपने ऐसा नहीं कि कहीं कोई भी चीज आप बगैर मेहनत कर लो तो वर्क हार्ड फॉर अ गुड फ्यूचर फॉर योर फ्यूचर वर्क हार्ड फॉर योर होम वर्क हार्ड फॉर योर फैमिली Shortcut will not bring you success. Shortcut will not do this and that thing. Shortcut cut will not be good for you. Yes. So no one is able to make any sentences. Okay. Right. Okay. Examples of anaphora in speech and writing. Here are some examples of anaphora from valid speeches and uh, writings. You can see this is again an example. The, these are the examples from speech and writing. We came, we saw, we conquered. Let me. We came, we saw, we conquered. It is not the size of the dog in the fight. It is the size of the fight in the dog. इसी को समझना है क्या बात है तो कही जा रही है इट इज नॉट द साइज ऑफ द डॉग इन द फाइट इट इज द साइज ऑफ द फाइट इन द डॉग नो वॉइस इज कमिंग इट सीम एज इफ यू आर नॉट ऑन द इन द लाइन किसी की आवाज नहीं आ रही ऐसा लग रहा है कि ज्वाइन करके आप लोग आगे पीछे हो गए हैं नो सर वी आर हियर नो सर वी आर हियर या सर यार यस वी आर हियर देयर शुड बी सम पार्टिसिपेशन एज वेल गलत ही बोल लेकिन कुछ तो बोले इट्स अ क्लास इट्स अ सेशन यू नो क्लास इज गोइंग ऑन इन इन दिस क्लास यू नीड आई नीड टू हैव योर पार्टिसिपेशन आपके सामने मिसाल है गो बैक टू मिसिसिपी गो बैक टू अलबामा गो बैक टू साउथ कैरोलिन Carolina, go back to Georgia. Go back to Louisiana. Louisiana. Go back to the slums and ghettos and hard northern cities, knowing that someone in this situation can and will be changed. Jim Martin Luther King, his speech. Both were sure that he was very famous for his speeches. Indifference is elicited no response. Indifference is not a response. Indifference is not a beginning. It is end. And therefore, indifference is always the friend of the enemy. For it. benefit the aggressor never is victim whose pain is magnified when he or she feels forgotten to ye badi zabardast baat ki indifference kehte hain jab we are when we are not taking any interest in different attitude do you really realize that when you ask women to take their cause to state referendum you compel them to beg men who cannot read for their political freedom do you realize that Such anomaly that the college president asking her Jennifer to give her a vote are overstraining the pressure. So, here, what you have to repeat is that what do you realize? Normally, you will see that the parliament will be there, and because they are so focused on that, you will realize that women in increasing numbers indignantly resent the long delay in their enfranchisement or enfranchisement. 
So do you realize, do you realize, do you realize? So it means that you can use one word, you can use phrase for this purpose. Ye ek poem hai, jis mein aapko iski example milegi. Kya hai example? There is a season, turn, 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 and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to laugh, a time to weep. All you need is love. There is by your poem can just see that. It has a very uh, interesting effect. Ekora after the poem, all you need is love. Lyrics by John Lennon and Paul McCartney. There is nothing you can do that can be, can't be done. Nothing you can sing that can't be sung. Nothing you can say, but you can learn how to play the game. Ekor yaha pe lyrics hai. Usme samal kiya gaya better ka. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Is that clear? So this is what we have in a fora. Reinforce or emphasize the concept. We use enough for us. Does anybody have any question regarding this? I'll send you this handout as well. Yes, किसी को सवाल है तो कुछ पूछ लो। Sir, it is like ये एक चीज एक होता है ये है ईडी में बताने क्या है सर। When tie can tie a tie, so why can't I tie? Sir, ये है ना पूरा होगा या नहीं? This is not enough for us क्योंकि इसको समझ भी नहीं आ रहा क्या बात कर रहे हैं। It is called tongue twister. Tongue twister के लिए भी है ना पूरा का समाल किया जाता है। है ना पूरा means you are trying to focus that particular you are trying to reinforce you know, that particular meaning or sentence. You are. This is how you are creating an effect upon a person when you repeat. Even in Urdu, if you repeat, so it, uh, you know, it is something that happens. I have said what I have said. 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 क्या कर रहे हैं इसको आप रीड पोस्ट कर रहे हैं ओके सर सर एना फोरा कैन बी यूज्ड फॉर टंग ट्विस्टर सेंटेंसेस सर तो वो सेंटेंसेस एना फोरा नहीं होंगे नहीं नहीं वो सेंटेंसेस तो उसके अंदर तो फिर वो डेफिनेटली देर आर सम अदर टाइप्स ऑफ लिटरेट डिवाइसेस आर यूज्ड लाइक एसोसिएशंस � or will repeat over. It can be a pronoun, it can be a noun, it can be a phrase, but in the beginning of a sentence, not in the middle. Even it can be a short sentence or plus type of thing is. Oh. Okay, sir. Yes, any other question? Remember, when used poorly, when anaphora is used poorly, it can be alienating for a reader. It can be difficult for a reader to understand things. It can appear too distracting, forced, or emphatic. Writing anaphora is a balance between deliberate usage as a literary device and the natural flow of wording. Therefore, it is very important for writers to carefully consider when and how to use anaphora. When and how to use anaphora to avoid overwhelming or disengaging the reader. So, this is This is very important. <laughs> you put examples in writing me of use the of uh, the use of anaphora. So, if you have any question, you can ask. Otherwise, I am taking a break, and then I'll start another thing. मैंने अभी आपको मैसेज आपकी आवाज बहुत कट रही है हेस्ट में एक्सप्रेस ये ना हो रहा है या या वो एक्चुअली वो एक प्रोवाइड भी है आप सब सिग्नल का मुसला है यहाँ पे 
Is that clear? So let's. Uh, I'll. I'm taking a break of five to ten minutes, and yes, I'll sir. start the next session. Right. See you in the next okay, session. Sir. Allah. Okay, sir. Allah. Okay. 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 Allah.